Hello everybody. Um, I had a very scary experience just a few minutes ago and um, I wanted to make sure everybody was safe first, um, but as soon as I got everybody out of harm's way in the house, um, <clears throat> I realized that I needed to warn people and make a video. Um, as some of you know, um, I started breeding rats recently in order to feed my snakes. Um, and I was um, trying to give them pre-killed uh, to the snakes, um, if, when I, you know, if, if at all possible, uh, especially my larger female velvet, uh, who you know, we eats somewhat larger rats uh, than weanlings. And so, um, you know, I found cervical dislocation to be very difficult and very gory, and I really didn't want to do it, so um, I started researching, and believe me, I researched this to death, and I was very careful, um, but um, I ended up having an accident anyway. I um, researched uh, methods for creating a... Um, a rat euthanasia chamber and I read numerous articles videos scientific stuff everything um, and I talked to a number of people got one made um, and um, you know thought that I had it completely safe um, people assured me that uh, that people that I spoke with who deal with these kinds of gases and things assured me that um, it probably would not I would not run into a problem with it um, that you know um, the explosion and that kind of thing is extremely rare with these these canisters um, I had the thing in my in my bedroom I was actually thinking about using it to euthanize some rats um, sometime next week. Um, I have actually sold a fair amount of my rats and didn't have to resort to that for a lot of them, um, <clears throat> but I had a uh, large number of males and people seem to want more females than males. Well, I was in my room today and I was actually communicating with several people on uh, this rat group that I belong to uh, where people buy and sell rats for pets and also for feeders. And all of a sudden, uh, I, was, I was in the middle of PMing somebody and all of a sudden I hear this huge pop, you know, almost like a, like a cap gun. And then this big, you know, sound and I looked over. And there was my CO2 canister spewing CO2 up into the air. And I was like, oh shit, what am I going to do? And, you know, I'm, uh, I can walk, but not very well. <laughs> I mostly use a power chair. And I got from there to my back door in eight seconds. I took the thing, grabbed it, ran outside as fast as I could. Um, and put it down outside and closed the door uh, outside on my back porch. Um, and within eight seconds, I almost went down. Um, and I want to tell you that um, I think that probably a lot of these um, canisters and equipment for this stuff is made in China. It's probably not very well regulated. I mean, I didn't find a whole lot of information about that, but there can be um, you know manufacturers defects in these canisters and it just happened to happen to me it seems like it seems like if something bad is gonna happen it seems like I always end up getting the worst case scenario I don't know why but it just seems to happen pretty often so um, you know I'm okay the animals are okay um, I recovered after I, you know, after I got the thing outside, I'm still kind of woozy and a little bit, you know, you know, dizzy headed and <clears throat> my lungs are irritated. Um, but, um, other than that, you know, I'm thinking clearly and I seem to be okay. And the snakes seem to be okay. I, I actually moved Tiger Lily, who was in my room where it happened, I moved her in uh, to the room with Velvet um, because my room, I don't know 
why this was, but I had a repairman who was fixing one of my windows, and he stupidly, I told him actually to replace the hardware so that the window could open and close. And because he was prejudiced, I live in a black neighborhood, he decided rather than taking my instructions, he was going to put a screw, a very difficult screw, into my window to bolt it closed so that nobody could break in on me. That was not what I asked him to do. Well, in this situation, I needed to open windows as fast as I could. And not only is it a kind of a hazard for this situation, but if there were a fire, I would need to get out uh, my bedroom window because usually I'm in bed in my bedroom most of the time in the house. Um, unless I'm actually doing something with the rats or going into one of the other rooms uh, with one of the other snakes. But um, I could not get the damn thing open, you know, and um, it took a while for the fumes to dissipate. I could actually smell the gas, what it smelled like. And I don't even know how to describe it. The best way I can describe it is like new library books. And um, it... Uh, it took a while to dissipate, but I think it has, um, I, I have been, just to be on the safe side, I've been keeping Tiger Lily in the other room with Velvet, and uh, Caduceus is in another bedroom, and that window does work, so both windows are wide open. My front door is wide open, uh, the only door that's not open is the back door where I put the apparatus out, because um, I didn't want fumes coming back in. Uh, so, um, after all that, you know, I went in and I checked the rats to make sure they were okay. They seemed okay. Uh, I guess it didn't really get to that part of the house. Um, but I was really surprised at how quickly, um, from the time that it actually started escaping till the time that I almost passed out. Um, I remember taking my last step to the door and almost falling because I was about ready to faint and I got the thing outside and I think maybe it took I don't know maybe a minute or two uh, for all of the gas to discharge and I checked on it a little later and it looked to be uh, no longer running um, but needless to say um, I think that um, there's just not a lot of information on these devices and um, you know a lot of people make them homemade because of the fact that it's much cheaper than buying one of the ones that veterinarians use those cost thousands and thousands of dollars they're usually huge big bulky machines and I don't even know for sure whether those are safe but um, I just thought that I needed to warn the reptile community about this danger uh, because you can do everything right and a canister can still fail. So my recommendation after having this experience would be that if you can, rather than to use one of these um, devices um, to get rid of the, the rats that you you don't need for your snakes or are too big to feed your snakes I would recommend as much as possible um, feeding the ones that you can't feed I'm giving the ones that you can't feed to your snakes um, another home um, I, I do belong to a rat buy and sell group so that is a good option you know if you have rats that are you know retired breeders or whatever um, you can always, there, there are a lot of groups available where you can, um, uh, you can sell them and, you know, at least make your money back to reinvest in your business um, for, you know, whatever um, you can reasonably charge for them. And, you know, oftentimes there are people looking for rats as pets um, or if you have an extremely large rat, like a, you know, extra large or, you know, jumbo or colossal rat um, go on some of the um, the buy and sell groups and ask whether somebody has a retic that might be able to eat something that large um, so what I'm doing now 
my plan after this experience is, um, you know, if at all possible, um, to get my large um, rat population, the you know, the, the large uh, adults, down um, to just the ones that I want to breed. And then uh, when I breed, just breed so that I have enough to sell and enough for my snakes so that they don't ever get too big to feed my snakes. And hopefully, if, if I sort of breed as I go, that will be a much better option uh, always around. But, um, you know, I just, I just felt a duty to let you all know that this is a real danger. Um, if people tell you that it's probably not going to happen, it's really safe, don't worry about it, yeah, it can happen. It happened to me. Um, and like I said, it can take 8 to 10 seconds for you to go down. And if you pass out, then the gas can overtake you, you can die, your animals can die, your children can die, whoever is in the house. Uh, because if you're not, if you're incapacitated, then you aren't in any shape to help somebody else. Um, but um, hopefully this video has been informative and um, I hope that maybe I could save someone else from this happening to them. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm actually filming from the front room right next to my front door. I have the door wide open and I'm just wanting to make good and sure that everything, all the fumes have fully dissipated before I go back into that room. Um, I have the fans, the ceiling fans running and all that. Um, but, um, you know, I just, uh, really wanted to, um, warn people about this hazard uh, that you know there are probably a lot more instances of this that are not reported and because you never know what the quality control is of these manufacturers um, you know all it takes is one of these um, faulty pieces of equipment and uh, you can literally die so um, uh, if, if you would, uh, please leave a comment. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and um, hopefully my next video <laughs> will be on a little bit of a happier note. Um, I do have some, some happy things to report. I also have some other rather harrowing things to report too. Uh, but I'll save that for another video. Uh, well, thanks for watching.